Anyone who knows me of course knows that I had to review the Toyota Hiace first, not least of which because of its motor swap in GT7 1.52. For those who don't know, maybe you've been living under a rock or whatever, you can fit it with the Turn 14 Subaru BRZ drift engine, as well as stripping the weight out to around 1300 kilos with over 1200 horsepower. And that's a hell of a combination to have, up around 900 horsepower per tonne. The performance is ballistic, but because of the fact that, as I alluded to in my first impressions of the update, you don't have the four-wheel drive advantage of the High Medic, which itself is a bit of a sluggish car, to be fair. You can make it quicker, but still, you can definitely feel the weight and the size. And of course, the lack of power on that one compared to this in particular. It's not that that car is not powerful, it's that this one is about three times as powerful under most circumstances. Now, in standard form, obviously without the engine swap, that's very different. To be fair though, it's still a hell of a lot lighter than the other version is already. 1,680 kilos, to put that into perspective, is not not too far off Mercedes SLR McLaren territory, which is kind of wild when you think of it that way. In terms of power though, well it's nowhere near a Mercedes that's for sure, 134 horses, unless the Mercedes you're talking about is maybe like an old school B-Class or something like that. In terms of the point level, it is pretty low of course, 288 in stock form. Incidentally it's only a 25 grand car to buy anyway, so by far the cheapest this time around, and one of the cheapest cars in the game in fact. But naturally when you do motor swap it, put it on better tyres etc, well the point level is going to skyrocket. You can, however, mostly because of the vehicle and its dynamics, keep the point level surprisingly low in comparison to its horsepower. If you compare it to most of the other vehicles in the game, certainly in the performance car sphere with that kind of horsepower, anything up around a thousand, most of the time, even with bad tyres, you're going to be looking at a pretty hefty level of points to deal with. Either that, or you're going to have to have it on like comfort hards and be completely undrivable, or very fun, depending on what way you look at it. With this one, you can even put it on racing tyres, such as I'm using here, and it's still not that bad. Now in terms of the physics, well, that's where things kind of make sense with the points, because although it is a lot of fun, this car definitely demands your focus and attention. It's uh, unsurprisingly not the most forgiving of cars to drive when it's got that much power in there. It is very fun. I will say that if you're looking just to drive something that's this big and oddball, if you will, just a wacky choice, then the high medic, the ambulance, is not only free, but it is definitely easier to drive. And again, the primary reason for that is the four-wheel drive. To be honest, the one thing I wish was different about this car is that it had four-wheel drive, because even though it makes things a bit too easy, by some people's standards, it does mean that you could at least put that 1200 horsepower all down to the road. And let's be honest, if this thing had four-wheel drive, it would be probably one of the most OP cars in the game, given that the point level might be a bit higher even then. It wouldn't be too crazy, given what the vehicle is. So it is something of a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, or more like a Tasmanian devil in a gerbil's clothing or something like that because it's an even more extreme example but it's wild, it's wacky, it's definitely very fun and funny to drive. The uh, oddball nature of it isn't lost on any of us I don't think. This is of course one of the things that Gran Turismo has always had, very wild wacky vehicles, even some which were real legitimate cars like the Escudo or the Espas F1 but then you had some which were just pretty tongue-in-cheek. Sure they might be historical or serious vehicles in real life but in the game they were always used as a joke and I think we can safely say Polyphony knew that they were going to be a joke. Stuff like the Daihatsu Midget, especially the three-wheel classic version which we last saw in Gran Turismo 4. Of course the Jay Leno tank car which you could technically use to win some races. I did in career mode in GT6 but it's more of a novelty car. And then you have some like the Espas and the Escudo and I guess you could say the Chaparral 2J or the Nike which you can use to win events. This one is somewhere in between. It's definitely no Chaparral or Espas F1 in terms of how good it is to drive but you could potentially win some stuff with it. What I would actually recommend though is being modest about it and that is not something which most petrol heads want to hear. The old Clarkson style of just giving it more power all the time is of course very tempting and it is very fun. Naturally that's exactly what I did when I first started driving it but in actual use to make it the most useful and most competitive version of what it can be you might want to think about being a bit more restrictive on your power. You could for example take it to under a thousand horsepower to make it a lot easier to drive, or if you want to be really realistic about it, maybe think about dropping the weight, keeping the standard engine, increasing the power on that one instead of the swap, which of course will save you a lot of cash as well if you're so inclined, but also keep the point level even lower. And here's the crucial advantage. 
being rear-wheel drive, being big and unaerodynamic, and not having a huge amount of power, but dropping the weight as well, means that you don't necessarily need amazingly good tyres. You could comfortably drive this car on comfort softs, for example, if you just drop the weight and have a modest amount, say maybe two, three hundred horses, and it could be a very, very useful, say, sub 400 point machine. I'm not sure. I haven't tuned it to that spec, but I would imagine, given how low the points are in comparison to the fully built level, it's probably a lot more modest if you keep it to like two or three hundred horses. Now be warned, I'm not going to say that it will be the most OP thing in the game if you do that, but it does have some potential, almost Forza Horizon style funny car potential of just making it into an inexplicably ridiculously good machine, kind of like the GMC Vanjura used to be in the older Forza games, it was just ridiculously fast for top end speed for no apparent reason. But yeah, I think most of us know exactly where you are with this car, you don't need some grand explanation of why it's fun, it just is. It's stupid. A lot of people are annoyed to see the car in the game. My first thought was not so much that I didn't want a van in the game, that's fine as far as I'm concerned. The thing which annoyed me a bit more is that it seemed a bit lazy in terms of the choice of the van, with it being essentially just a variation of the ambulance which we already had. I would have much rather had something like a Ford Transit for obvious reasons, imagine what kind of upgrades you could do to that, for example. Turn it into maybe like a super van replica or something, or even something else, like a GMC Vandura, something totally different and unexpected, maybe even something a bit older. Such as it is, this is the one which we've got. If, incidentally, you're curious how it compares to something like the Toyota Alphard, well, spoiler alert, it doesn't. The Toyota Alphard is by far the best vehicle of this type in the game, and to be honest, it's so far ahead of anything else that it's not even funny. The Alphard with the Lexus LFA swap, of course, again with the advantage of four-wheel drive, I've done a build for that one which was essentially my equivalent of a Renault Espace F1, but for Toyota. I think I called it the Toyota GR Project Alpha, and it was a monster. It's just a legitimate monster to drive, and it's so much fun. And for its point level, once again, I use that thing all the time in career mode. You can use it for quite a few different events, and it is really genuinely useful. So if you're looking just for a really fast van, minivan, you know, big box kind of vehicle, then by far the Alphard is the better choice but this one's very fun, it's very cheap, and it's pretty stupid when you fully build it, so there's certainly plenty of fun to be had. The visual upgrades are very cool as well, the wide body is a bit lacking, but aside from that it's good. So yeah, it, it's a fun, versatile all-rounder, which for some people you'll roll your eyes, and for other people you'll clap your hands, so it depends what kind of personality you are in the game. Of course, next up we'll talk about the Evo 8 tomorrow, so stick around for that, and I'll see you next time. But for now, thanks for watching.